The TNT barrel and hop-up upgrade for the GHK M4. It is said that this is one of the very best upgrades for the GHK M4 platform. Is it? Let's find out. Hey guys, Badabing here, and thank you for joining me. TNT have built up quite the reputation producing finely crafted inner barrels, hop-up chambers, and their own design rubber bucking. I've heard various statements describing TNT's creation, and they mainly involve the words, shoot laser beams. So, I absolutely wanted to try this out for myself, and see if there was any truth to the myths. Removing the article from this cardboard tube, it's pretty clear right from the offset of the quality of the build, materials, fit and finish. Well, it certainly ought to be for the near $100 enhancement. It's interesting to note that from the last inch on the end of the inner barrel, it has grooves inside, a sort of rifling that is supposed to create an air cushion and leads to greater accuracy and range. This version is for the 10 inch GHK M4 and it's going in this mod 1. So let's hook it up and see how well it shoots BBs. Of course I couldn't simply adjust the hop and record what it scored for a complete conclusion fresh out of the box, so I spent a couple of months and hundreds of rounds bedding in and evaluating the system. Also retuning the adjustable nozzle to 320 and 330 FPS. The target I'd be shooting at is 20 meters away, and I was initially using double blaster 3s. They aren't too bad, and are relatively cheap for a heavy semi-intermediate BB anyway. Once I had depleted my supply of those, I moved on to RWA Airsoft Surgeon 3s. Now these were slightly more expensive, but I guess that's the premium you pay for Airsoft Surgeon in the title. Following the change of BBs, I actually noticed that the grouping stabilised so aiming at a specific point on paper yielded consistent hits. Even the stock inner barrel performed well, just goes to show the difference between the brands of BBs. If you're looking for accuracy, match grade ammo is the way to go, but don't expect it to be easy on your wallet. I always aimed at a single point on the paper to ensure I'd record an accurate shot placement. What I found was the accuracy between that and the original barrel were fairly similar, TNT shooting just a little tighter. Just a little tighter? That's not really the performance I was hoping for. So after a few days of thinking things through, I decided to up the FPS and see if this affected the groupings. I retuned towards the top of the hour at 380 to 390 FPS, and here's how I did. Now this, this is more like it. Comparing the previous target sheets with these new scores, the groups are tighter and are more consistent from sheet to sheet. It's not the fact that it just happened to bed in well, the higher FPS is key to achieving the optimum performance with this upgrade. Retuning the nozzle resulted in a far better accuracy like flipping a light switch. With the accuracy improved for hitting paper at 20, I wanted to know what it was like pinging a human sized target at range. Now, if you've previously seen my review of the Mod 1, you may remember that I tried to hit a target at 50 meters away, and failed. The BBs made it out there, but sadly without any degree of precision. I shot the same RWA-3s, and they all land within a reduced area than before. It was able to strike the target twice out of the full magazine. To find out if it could do better, I dug out an old pack of Garda 3.6s. 
These are decent rounds, but of course, being green, they are almost impossible to see. And if you're colorblind like I am, then you're sh <laughs> out of luck. Regardless, I gave it a go and tried to connect with the target at 50 meters. One of the main issues I have here is crosswind. Usually, when I was on a rest day from work, the wind would be too choppy, so I had to wait a few weeks for a calm day. The wait was worth it. I scored several hits from a full magazine, even to a point where I had two headshots in a row. As you can see, the BBs land on close proximity to the target, and of course, I do have the odd lick of wind which would feather the BBs just left or right. On the whole, they do fly pretty straight and offers you the advantage of predictability. This can make you anticipate where your hits are likely to go. Occasional flyers don't stray too far from where you need them though. This is fantastic. It opens up the possibility of it being a DMR platform. All you'd need is heavyweight precision grade BBs in conjunction with the TNT kit, and you could easily slip into the marksman role. I also tried the original barrel set with the Garda 36s. Goes without saying, using heavier rounds you're more likely to gain a hit, and this was true even with the stock parts. I tagged the mannequin a few times, but the TNT just did it better. So, the TNT GHKM4 upgrade. Is the buzz on Facebook groups and forums all true, or simply over-exaggeration? Let's be honest, no matter how you paint it, you're still shooting a ball bearing through a smooth ball. Well, with an exception for the couple of centimetres on the tip of the barrel anyway. Shooting laser beams is not the term I'd use to describe the effectiveness of the upgrade. Physics will only allow you so much, especially in a toy gun world. It's an enhancement something that would give your limited ammo capacity higher levels of success than before. Speaking from experience using GBBRs at extended ranges, you're almost always going to waste the majority of a mag just trying to get that one guy. Before you know it, you have four magazines pulling your pants down in that dump pouch on your belt, your rifle has three shots left, and the guy you are sending all your hate to gets taken out by your teammate with his G&G combat machine. In that situation, it dawned on me that, in actual fact, I wasn't even close. An upgrade such as this just really makes a lot of sense if you're intending it to perform across the board. One thing which I believe is being addressed by TNT is their development of softer buckings for lower FPS guns. I'd welcome the softer bucking. I said earlier, the standard one present in the retrofit kit requires the higher FPS to get the very best out of the upgrade. A 50 or 60 degree rubber would be great and perfect for users running lower FPS builds. There are a couple of other options available for the system with regards to hop up and barrels. During my time with this, 40 BBs can do more for you than without it. This has the capability to be a fine upgrade for marksman's setup. Just don't do it with cheap ammo. Get some decent sniper grade rounds and see how you get on. Big thanks to Jay for lending me this rifle and letting me be the first to punch holes with this TNT kit. Hope you guys have found this interesting. If you did, why not hit that like? And if you haven't already, subscribe so you can keep up to date with my latest videos. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. You can also check me out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash pictures. I've had a few comments and messages recently asking me to make a part 2 of the GHK vs Tokyo Marui M4 MWS video. What do you think? GHK is soon to be releasing the updated 2.0 version of their M4, so would you like to see one of those be put up against TM's M4? Let me know down in the comment section. Until next time my friends, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in a bit.